Merci et bon matin. Thank you so much and good morning. Thank you for inviting me here today to speak to things that have been partially mentioned by a few people this morning, including my predecessor and Mr. Simons, who also alluded to it in his talk this morning, and I'm very happy about this. For those of you who know me, you won't be surprised if I tell you that I'll be using the few minutes that I have today to put the emphasis on the importance of cooperation and of convergence in preserving archives in Canada. When I was looking at the list of participants to today's summit, I was happy to see that beyond archivists and professionals, there were also people from public and private institutions, historians, professors, authors, etc. Il est évident que Obviously, the organizers of, the, of this summit wanted to bring together people from various environments in order to get their point of view, point of view of individuals, organizations, and people who are largely interested in the future of archives in Canada. I believe that this summit could have been more inclusive because I believe our vision of archives is still too narrow. A new model of archiving systems will be incomplete if we focus too much on ourselves. In this era where boundaries are more and more diffuse, we cannot believe that we should be the sole stewards of archives. And I think to this end, I should discuss the fact that museums have not been invited here. And I will say, full disclosure, that I have worked for museums. And this is regret regrettable because a great deal of our heritage is found in these museums. For example, who has the most digitalized photographs in Quebec? Is it an archival institution? large or small? No, not at all. It is, in fact, the McCord Museum, where I've also worked. With more than 80,000 online photographs, it offers a large database to the public, but it also uses uh, the critical mass of visual information for themes, visual organizations and other pedagogical endeavors. Even the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Montreal and Quebec's Musée des Beaux-Arts in Quebec City have also actively begun purchasing photographs. Another example, very quickly, I could show you many more, the Glenbow Museum, Museum in Calgary that many of you surely know. This museum and you can see it on their website, is the largest repository of photographs, non-governmental repository in Canada, with more than five kilometers of documents in its uh, storage facilities that tells the story of Western Canada. A study conducted by Bibliothèque et Archives Québec and Musée des Musée Québécois revealed that not only do museums have significant archives as you can see the figures up here on the screen, on the screen. but if you exclude uh, the statistics coming from BA and Q, museums have 65% of textual uh, records. I'd repeat then, a large part of the Canadian archives are found in museums. You'll probably say that many museums probably employ archivists, and it's true. I worked in a museum for many years. Consequently, this, these institutions are represented by these archivists through the association, whether it's in Quebec or in Canada. This is true and quite right. However, it's insufficient 
in so far as we need to have dialogue amongst institutions, not only individuals. Therefore, why should we not include, and I'm uh, proposing it here, the Société des Musées Québécois, the Canadian Society of Museums, uh, when we discuss the future of archives in Canada. Elsewhere in the world, initiatives have been launched over the past decades, and they have proven beyond any doubt that we have begun a convergence. And I'm going to show you a few slides in a row to illustrate this point. It could be through conferences, symposia, and fora where there is talk of convergence, of uniting for various reasons, archives, museums, and libraries. There are web disseminations as well, such as Archive Grid, that uh, allow access to museums, archives, etc. Many of you probably know Europeana, which is a very interesting project that is based in Europe, in the EU. In fact, during our next convention at the Association, uh, the Quebec Association of Archivists, we will have somebody from Europeana who will tell us more about the project. It uh, pulls together the heritage from all countries in Europe from their museums, archives, etc. It could be as well institutions that want to finance, finance museums or libraries such as IMLS in the US or the Museum Council in the UK that has been replaced now but that was there to support museums and archives, or other projects such as the OCLC project, Archives and Museum Collaboration Program, that uh, has borne fruit. Perhaps modest results, but are, they are still interesting. Despite this, despite the fact that we want to stay true to our principles, we archivists must recognize that we are there to serve our users and that it's through greater cooperation between all stakeholders that we will better achieve this. We will not lose our soul through this. Uh, working with people from other sectors will not mean eliminating our professional status. Rather, I think we'll be stronger in serving our customers, for example. Collaboration is not only desirable, it's essential. In closing, here is an extract from the Norwegian Archives Authority that says something very interesting. The sources of knowledge and information extend across many sectors. And furthermore, the common interest of sectors are strengthened by the use of information and communication technology. And because I'm an agent provocateur, I will say that these users are moreover not very interested in knowing the where the, the knowledge comes from. What they want is access to information with its context and a quick access to it. Therefore, we, ha we need a more united approach to archives. I could have quoted other examples. There are many. I spoke to museums, but there are other initiatives that uh, use the knowledge of its users, for example, for example, of their users. For example, crowdsourcing the Citizen Archivist Dashboard in the US, which is an original project uh, that uh, uses knowledge from the crowd to make information more accessible. It says that users should not only have their word to say about archives here in Canada, and many of my colleagues uh, said so, but that they should uh, take an active park part as well. I should speak to oral history as well. Some things are done regarding oral history. For example, here in uh, the UK, the Listening Project by the BBC, that's inspired from what was done in the US with a historic core. In short, if there's one thing I'd like you to remember of my talk today is that our documentary heritage here in Canada will only be properly served if we involved 
all the stakeholders that have a role to play in its conservation. So thank you very much for your attention.